okay guys this is going to be a video about telling you how to crack CSI and net I've been getting many emails and messages to consider this matter and uh, I'm going to tell you six different rules and if you follow this six different rule I sh I'm pretty sure that you'll be getting CSI and net and uh, those rules are again in this video I'm not going to tell anything about learning anything about the topics and everything and this is a whole series of videos in this whole series of videos I'll be talking about several different sections and aspects of CSI and NET and how to get through those portions now in this video is going to be overview of all these processes now you need to follow six important rules and if you follow these rules I am telling you again if you follow these rules you will be succeeded now first rule is it you need to think about it that it is possible to get CSI and net to get CSI or JRF or LS whatever now it is possible believe it believe it yourself that it is possible once you believe that it is possible most of the part of the job is already done because most of the students I find who haven't cracked the net yet they think that net is a huge tough uh, exam to be cracked it is a kind of critical and difficult because a lot of uh, regions are there a lot of uh, topics are there and people are coming from every different sections of biology because biology is a vast subject it's a huge subject so many discipline are there multidisciplinary subject that's why it, it is a complicated but it is not impossible it is possible now second point is stick to the basic concepts and learn things do not mug up things do not mug up from the book that you're looking at do not get everything that you're getting and get numbers it's difficult to crack net more than getting more numbers in your examination because in your college examinations it is easier because you are you are if you're in autonomous college it's easier you are getting questions you know what kind of questions is going to come but in this case you don't know you don't have any clue so do not mug up things you don't know learn things as in such a way that you can teach someone else that's a very important concept so try to get the idea that whether you can teach it, teach it to somewhere else you, you can teach it in simpler way if you can teach some material if you can teach a topic in a very simple way to a person to a general person who do not have a, any idea of that topic before you think and in that case I think you know that concept right so that is very very important stick to the basic concepts learn things do not mug up things now the third important thing is building up connections now you need to build up connections connection means in this case you need to build up uh, different connections in biology that means macrobiology with microbiology because there are biology in macro level that we are seeing physiology macro level we can see for example a digestive system it is made up with different organs like stomach different secretory organs like liver and many different things are re arranged with each other you need to know how all of these things are functioning but then you need to connect these things with a micro level that is the metabolism because that's the ultimate fate of the food that you take right so once you connect those ideas that when the food is taken I it's being chewed then it goes to a stomach the, uh, breakdown is going on it goes to intestine further breaking down is going on then finally the food material is absorbed in, in, in through the intestine and it comes to the blood reaches the cell and then finally inside the cell metabolism start to take over and it will break it down via glycolysis Krebs cycle so can you see that how you can connect physiology with biochemistry so you need to connect different dots you need to connect those things with each other once you connect those things you know you know biology and that's the way to learn biology firmly connect things now the fourth important a parameter for that is recall readings now most of the times what students do I, what I find my students are doing most of the time they are just getting they're just uh, getting the materials they're just reading they're reading and reading and reading reading won't give you the idea of building your long-term memory remember reading only get you some short-term memory once you pass through a particular exam you just forget about everything whatever you studied in the previous class that's what happens because you only read you never recall things so you need to recall things that means you read once then close the book 
and sit onto a relaxed place and try to recall what you've learned. Once you recall a thing, that thing build in your mind. It's another uh, part of biology. This is called cognitive science, and this is the part of biology when you can learn how your mind is building your memory. Now, in those cases, if you recall things, there are new nerve bridges start to form in your brain, and those nerve bridges are kind of telling you, and they are kind of compact your your uh, idea, and they are making your memory a long-term storage for that uh, whatever you read. So that is why you need to recall things to get your memory built up quickly for long-term purposes, and you require those long-term memory because there are a lot of subjects in CSI and NATE, and you can't just read all of them before going into the exam. So once you read them, you need to keep those things in your mind for a longer period of time, and you can do this by building this memory by recalling those topics. And the fifth important thing is developing analyzing power. Now this thing is some people have a good analyzing power, some people do not. But it depends on your IQ, that how you can analyze things. Now in CSI and NET, you are having group A, which is completely uh, given to this particular part of general aptitude and reasoning. That In that portion you require your IQ, but whatever IQ you are in, you are moderate or better, whatever you are in, it's for all of them that you need to have a developing analyzing power. You can develop your own analyzing power by setting up experiments, by looking at experiments, by working with experiments. That's why it's very, very important to go and join a lab and do some research. If, if you are doing an MSc, it's very important Then you can go to your lab when you are doing the practicals, try to analyze those practicals, why we are doing these practicals, what are the outcomes of the practicals, and you need to connect those things. Once you connect those things, with together and then you can get the idea that how everything is going on once you know that Mendel dis uh, Mendel get the idea of independent assortment but how did he get the independent assortment idea you need to trace back from the answer towards the question what he formed and what kind of results he got so this kind of experimental design will help you to understand the process more detailed manner so it's very important that you yourself involve in different uh, research activities that's why if you are MSc pass out, go and join a lab and do some research experiments because it is required to crack the third part of the net and that is the C group of the net. It's very, very important because the C group questions are coming from experiment type questions. So you need to, you need to develop those analyzing power that what is going to be the outcome of the experiment. Now if they tell you the outcome, what are the experiments to get this outcome? So you need to think on your own. Try to think the, those, those uh, type of answers which are already been done. You get experiments which are already been done. F question yourselves that this is the outcome, so what is going to be th the type of experiments that was done? And then you can get the answers, right? That's how you can develop an analyzing power in your mind. Now if you develop those analyzing power, you can crack the net for sure, because one who can crack the net must crack the group C, because C is the most uh, scoring area because and and also best most negative kind of area because it's having four numbers each question so if you m m write most of the questions at C it will be very easier for you to crack the net and finally last but not the least that is the time management and it is uh, it is guys the most important part because remember all of the topics that I'm telling you are important but time management is something uh, until and unless you can go and sit for CSI and net exam you won't be understand uh, understanding what is time management so uh, in my case I also witnessed this time manage management management thing because first time I cracked net at the second time I haven't got it for the first time time management is a very vital factor because once you get for time management in CSI and net because those questions are there you are having many questions uh, 75 from uh, group C from group B you are having 50 from group A we are having 20 so that much number of questions and those C group questions are really really larger really really longer so you need to look for those questions so that you can manage the time try to solve CSIR previous CSIR questions at your home by setting a time at 3 hour and try to get that answer and try to get that idea that wh what is the actual average time you require to solve those questions and this is a my tip to go for this way for solving the questions first group a then group C then group B this
this is the way you can do it easily because I want uh, people to solve group C first otherwise group C questions are very much analytical and once you go for sitting uh, for this exam it was in the morning and very the weather is fine your brain is fresh so try to get those questions at very fast because your brain is very good at that time it's just uh, reasoning is very good so just go for the C first then other then B so start with A then go to C then come to B because uh, answering B is pretty easy answering B is kind of required less time compared to C because C requires a lot of time and if you divide this three hour session into smaller part I can tell you can go for uh, say 30 minutes for group A you must go for devote for another two hour for group C and last 30 minutes to group B so that's the way you can solve it or you can manage it on your own way uh, whatever time you can get that's why it's important guys to practice solving CSIR net question papers previous years papers and also some model question papers that are available from many sites or from many regions many hard books are there so go for it and look for the time management now once you get those time management factor it will be super easy for you to go through CSI and net so uh, in a sense these are the five important six important things guys so uh, so let's begin so it's it is possible believe it second thing stick to the basic concepts and learn things third one build up connections between different topics fourth things recalling things you need to recall right fifth thing develop analyzing power by doing experiments involving in research experiments and five is the time management and managing your time so these are the six important messages that I'm giving you if you follow these th six things it will be easier for you to go through net and that's it guys thank you